Welcome to Our Own Voice, a partnership in mental health awareness in cooperation with NAMI Wichita and Kaysen Community Radio. NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. We are the largest grassroots advocacy network for people with mental illness and their family members, with over 800 national affiliates and 13 Kansas affiliates, with NAMI Wichita being one of those 13. We provide awareness, support, education, and advocacy for people affected by mental illness. Our purpose here is to provide a community conversation on KSUN Radio that gives insight into what it's like to live with mental illness. Our intention and our hope is that our program will change attitudes, assumptions, and stereotypes about people with mental health conditions, and in so doing, we will stop the stigma associated with mental illness. My name is David Larson. I am very pleased and proud to be your host today, and I am a person living with mental illness. I'm in recovery for major depressive disorder. Like everyone, I struggle with the ups and downs of emotions and the challenges of being fully human, but I am doing great, and I know I have many gifts to offer my family, my friends, and my community. Now, before I get too far into the program, I want to introduce Kara, Kara Carter, and my co-host today. Hello, Kara. Hi, David. How are you? Doing just fine. And how are you doing? I'm, I'm well. Good. That's excellent. And our technical producer is Mike today. Hello, Mike. Hello. Thank you. And we have uh, David Peterson listening in. Hello, David. Hello, David. And um, we have our guest today. And our guest is Nicole. And Nicole, you, you ta- taught me how to say your last name, but I'm going to ask you to go ahead and say it. Thanks, David. Uh, My name is Nicole Fanolio. Fanolio, okay. Well, that's the only time I'm going to worry about your last name. I'm just going to call you Nicole. That's perfect. That's good. Well, let's start out by asking you the question that I ask everyone, and that is, where were you born and where did you grow up? Uh, I'm a Wichita native. Awesome. Yeah, born and raised right here uh, in the Wichita area. Only lived away for a few years um, and then came back because this is where my family is and uh, I love this area. Excellent. All right. And um, what high school did you graduate from and what was your mascot? I went to Mays High School and we were the Eagles. The Eagles. All right. Did Mike and David, did you guys know that? Sure. Okay. (laughs) Well, yes. Yes, I did. Okay. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> See, I didn't know that, so I'm I am not mascot literate. So <laughs> I'll forgive you this time. Oh well, thank you. Um, okay, so what hobbies do you have? Well, um, that's an interesting question. Um, I don't know that I have a lot of time for hobbies, but things that I enjoy doing with my uh-huh. time uh, would be running my nonprofit organization. Okay. Um, and spending time with my family. I have two little kids, so they keep me very, very busy. Uh, but when I do have a little bit of free time, I like to read and I really like to bake. Ooh. Do you? I do. Okay, so party <laughs> at Nicole's house later on. <laughs> that would explain the flower. Oh, the, yeah, the yeah, flower the, that she's uh, covered that in. She's wearing. Yeah, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. So, but you know, I I hope you bake chocolate chip cookies. I, I bake everything. Do I like you? yeah, I enjoy trying new recipes and okay. experimenting with different flavors. Awesome. Uh, excuse me, aren't you Italian though? So Well, my husband is Italian. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So a shout out to your two children. Hello, children. Hello, children. So, what, what what give you can say their names, can't you? Your sure. first names if yeah. you want to. Yeah. yeah. My daughter is Kate and my son is Grayson. Excellent. Hello, Kate and Grayson. Yeah. All right. Names famous on, on radio now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Do you have any pets? I do. I have two dogs. Two dogs. I do, yep. Yeah. Rue and Jax. Awesome. Okay. What kind of dogs are they? Well, uh, that's a good question. They, I, I'm not sure. They're rescues. They're Heinz 57? They are. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they're rescues, so they're a mix of several different breeds. That's completely okay. Those are Those are the best dogs as far as I'm concerned. They are. So, all right. Well, um, now, to sort of pedal backwards, um, what is your nonprofit organization that you work with? So, I started an organization a couple years ago called Stop Suicide ICT. Okay. And and uh, I'm sure we can guess what it's about, but go ahead and share with us what it's about. Yeah. So, we uh, our main goal is to just provide education and awareness around suicide. Um, to help 
not only prevent suicides in our community, but just uh, to really stop the stigma surrounding mental illness and suicide and suicidal ideation. Okay. And um, you go into schools, you go to workplaces... We will go anywhere that people will have us. Okay. Um, but yes, primarily schools uh, are the number one place that we go to to provide training and education. Uh, we do a lot with other area nonprofit organizations to educate and train their staff, um, especially to recognize the warning signs in the people that they are working with in the community. Okay. So now I need to bring us to a close here for our first section. This is Our Own Voice on Case and Community Radio. We're going to take a quick break and be right back. Welcome back to Our Own Voice, a partnership in mental health awareness in cooperation with NAMI Wichita and Quezon Community Radio. NAMI is a national alliance on mental illness. Our Own Voice is intended to humanize a misunderstood, highly stigmatized topic of mental illness by showing that it's possible and common to live with uh, live well with a mental health condition. Now, before I continue, um, we probably need to note that this episode uh, could have some some triggers associated with it for people who are dealing with a lot of mental health issues. So, please take care of yourself. Um, you know, take yourself, uh, yourself's mental health first and foremost. And if you need to turn it off, uh, turn off the show, I understand. Um, we, we really enjoy your listening, but we want you to, to, um, to do that. So, um, but, uh, during the break, Nicole, we were talking about language and all sorts of things. And to begin with, let's let's ask this question: What motivated you to start Stop Suicide ICT? Um, well, my motivation came from several different things. Um, so, to kind of start with, uh, professionally, I'm a clinical social worker. And so I've worked in the mental health field for about 10 years now, and I've worked with a lot of people who struggle with um, mental illness, with suicidal thoughts, and who have um, had suicide attempts. And I've worked with a lot of family members who have lost loved ones to suicide. So I've seen um, very up close and personally how it can really affect and impact um, a person, a family, and a community. Um, in addition to that, I serve on the Cedric County Suicide Prevention Coalition. So I meet very regularly with a group of um, providers within the community to help address this ongoing issue. And I just really saw what a significant problem it was in our community and how it's, it's an even bigger problem in our community than it is in other parts of the country. Really? Mm hmm Okay. And I just didn't feel like there was enough being done. So um, kind of just got a wild hair. Um, a colleague of mine and I got together and decided to um, start our own organization, and it kind of grew from there. Um, but I do have a, a personal connection as well. Uh, there have been mental health struggles in my family, uh, and I've had my own struggles with depression as well. Um, so I, I felt that I had almost a unique um, kind of perspective on it because I can speak from both the consumer and the provider side of things. Okay. Very good. Um, so that that leads me to another question, and that is uh, talking about language. Mm -hmm. um, what what are the do's and don'ts of, of language? Um, because language is powerful, and we want to use proper language when we are uh, talking about a subject such as suicide. Um, we don't say, uh, I committed suicide or I... I tried to commit suicide or something like that. That's that's a no-no, correct? 
Right. Yeah. So there's been a lot of um, new research in this field lately. And you're right in that language really does matter because the words that we say um, really do affect people. Uh, but but they also kind of affect um, communities as well. And so there's been a lot of research um, surrounding the language we use and how it affects people's perception of suicide and perception of mental illness. And when people use the word commit, it really uh, kind of criminalizes the act. People tend to think of the word commit in the sense of committing a crime. And... Um, and we know that that's not what this is about. It's not a criminal or a legal act. It's not a crime. So the recommendation really is to not use the word commit suicide, but rather uh, in speaking about someone to say that someone died by suicide. Okay. Or or I attempted suicide. Right. Or to say that they attempted suicide or attempted to uh, end their own life. Right. Okay. So um, because like we said – Language is important, and we need to we need to pay attention to that. It's very important. Um, and for for my own well being, I know that um, that I did struggle with that, and I struggled with my internal my internal mechanisms and, and all that stuff. So um, I need to bring us to another close here for our second uh, um, second section. This is Aaron Voice on Case on Community Radio. We are talking with Nicole about mental illness, and we're going to take a quick break and be right back. Our Own Voice is brought to you by NAMI. If you would like to learn more about the National Alliance on Mental Illness, the programs we offer, or get involved, please visit NAMI.org. Welcome back to Our Own Voice, a partnership in mental health awareness in cooperation with NAMI Wichita and KSUN Community Radio. NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Now, Nicole, um, we were sort of talking about statistics, and so I'd, I'd like to ask you some of the st statistics that you have for suicide, suicide prevention, things like that happening within our community here in Wichita. Yeah, so um, one of the things I just wanted to share to help people kind of just really understand how prevalent of an issue this is, um, that the suicides in our community are, are actually significantly higher than other parts of the country um, to the point that actually they're about 25% higher here in Cedric County compared to uh, the United States as a whole. 25%? 25% higher. Wow. Mm -hmm. Why would that be? You know, I think that's the million-dollar question. Um, suicide is such a complicated um, issue that it, it's really hard to narrow it down to specific reasons. Um, there's never one reason why someone ends their own life. Um, it, it, there's a, a lot of different factors that go into play there. So to really narrow it down to reasons why the numbers are higher um, – it, that's a very difficult thing to do. Yeah, but uh, something I need to note is that um, that uh, we are talking about suicide prevention in this program, and so um, if this is triggering for you um, uh, and you need to uh, call someone, uh, you can call 1-800-273-TALK. Isn't, isn't that right? Yeah, that's the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, and that number is available 24-7, 365 days a year um, for anyone to call and talk to someone, whether they're having suicidal thoughts or they're just struggling with a rough day and need to talk to someone, or even if someone needs to call and get advice about a family member that might okay. be struggling and they're not sure what to do or how to help them, they can also call that number and speak to a trained counselor about how to help a family member or a friend too. 
Excellent. And that number again is 1-800-273-TALK. Um, so, and there's, there's also some other information on this card that you gave me. It says you can text CONNECT, C-O-N-N-E-C-T, to 741741. Yeah, that's the uh, Crisis Text Line, which is a really amazing resource that's available nationally as well because so many people um, are more comfortable texting than they are, you know, picking up a phone and actually talking to someone that there's this great new resource uh, that people can now text a crisis hotline to get the help that they need as well. And so, again, that number is 741741. And simply by texting that number, uh, they can chat with a, a trained counselor. Okay, and there's there's one last thing, and that is that people can chat at imalive.org, mm-hmm. I-M-A-L-I-V-E dot org. Yeah, so if they're on a um, some sort of device and they can, they can go online and they can chat um, at imalive.org as well. So there's various uh, resources that are available for people to reach out and get the help that they need if they find themselves in a crisis. That's wonderful. I'm definitely going to put put this stuff on our webpage um, because I I have the numbers up there, but I want to to put it in this format because that's that's nice how it sits. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um, any, any other questions that people have? I'm I'm drawing a blank. I'm just loving listening to you talk. So, do you give presentations? You said you that. How often do you try to get up and give a presentation? And where at schools or where? So the majority of the trainings that we provide uh, are in schools. Um, There's just such a significant need. Um, We're willing to provide training anywhere uh, anyone is is willing to have us. Uh, But most of our trainings are in schools or with other nonprofit organizations. So we've worked um, with a lot of other uh, social service agencies in the Wichita area to train their staff to recognize warning signs and how to help someone uh, that they're working with that may be struggling. Um, We've also partnered and worked with several different um, faith-based communities and churches in the area to provide training to them. Um, A lot of times um, pastors and churches will find themselves counseling uh, their members. And so we provide training and consultation for them as well. Um, do you have statistics as to uh, age group? Uh, what age group is, is most uh, prominently struggling with this issue? Yeah, so while suicide can definitely affect anyone um, and any any person of any age, uh, it is most common um, in people that are kind of in that really prime of their life. So ages 35 to 54 is the highest age group um, where we see suicides. And that's not only here in Sedgwick County, but also across the country. That's the highest age group. Okay. So that was 35 through 54? 35 to 54. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, well, um I am coming up to another break here, and so I need to say this is our own voice on KSM Community Radio. We are dealing with, um, uh, we are talking with Nicole, and we are going to take a quick break and be right back. Welcome back to Our Own Voice, a partnership in mental health awareness in cooperation with NAMI Wichita and Kaysen Community Radio. NAMI is a national alliance on mental illness. Now, Kara, I want to turn to you now and ask you to share with us uh, information about NAMI. Certainly. Information on how to learn more about mental health and get involved with the mental health community at NAMI Wichita, Um, 316-686-686. 1373 is our message line. You can call that number and leave a message and someone will call you back as soon as possible to respond to your your issue. Or you can send an email to info at namiwichita.org. That's info at n-a-m-i wichita.org. 
visit our webpage at www.namiwichita.org or even find us on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash namiwichitaks. Um, we have lots of activities going on from our various classes to our various meetings. The first Tuesday of the month is our affiliate education meeting at 7 p.m., where we often have wonderful speakers share with us happenings in mental health. On the third Tuesday of the month, we have Ask the Doctor Hour from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. <laughs> Sorry, I lost myself. Mm -hmm. And our we have our support groups. Yeah, you're right. We, we go from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then our support groups from 7 to, I believe it's 8.30. 8, 8.20. 8.20, 8.30, yeah. okay. Okay, and then the first and third Tuesdays, our meetings are at 1010 North Main, which is the same location as Breakthrough Club and Episcopal Social Services. Mm -hmm. And we have a fourth meeting, which happens on the fourth Tuesday of the month, and that is at College Hill United Methodist Church from 630 to 830, and that is our share and care group. I think, I, I don't know if I have that written down for you or not, but anyway, let's turn back to Nicole. Nicole, um, what information can, if people want to contact you, how do they get in touch with you? So the best way to contact us uh, or to find uh, more information about what we're doing in the community, uh, you can visit our website at www.stopsuicideict.com or visit our Facebook page. It's just Facebook slash Stop Suicide ICT. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We are always looking for more places to go and provide training, uh, provide education. We have a lot of wonderful um, printed materials that we would be happy to uh, mail or bring by. Um, even if you're not able to host a training and you just like some information, Excellent. Uh, we can bring information over. Um, if you just have any questions, you can contact us. Um, we also have a new quarterly newsletter that will be coming out. Wonderful. You can visit our website to subscribe to that. Okay. Or if you're interested in getting uh, more involved and want to volunteer with our organization, you can go and contact us through our website to sign up for an upcoming volunteer training and get more involved that way. That is wonderful. Awesome. Okay. And I can see already some, um, some wonderful partnerships that we can do between, between you and, and NAMI Wichita, um, maybe even having you out for a training and everything. That would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that, would, that would give uh, people a, a another chance to hear you guys. We would love to. That would be awesome. So um, what other things would you like to share with us today? Uh, you know, one thing that I like to tell everyone is that, you know, you never know uh, if it's going to happen to you until it's too late. There are so many times that um, when we're out sharing with um, information with a community, whether it's at a health fair or some other community event, and people will pass by and say, um, you know, oh, I don't need that information. It doesn't apply to us. And so many people um, will say that because, um, you know, it doesn't until it does. And then at that point, it's too late. Um, and so I, I think that um, there can never be too many people that learn to recognize what the warning signs are so that they can help someone that's struggling before it gets to the point of them attempting to take their own life or ending their life. Right. Very good. Um, and, and to our listeners, um, don't be afraid to call. Um, again, the, the number that we listed earlier was 1-800-273-TALK uh, uh, or TALK. And you can also text CONNECT to 741741 and you can chat at imalive.org. Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, um, don't be afraid to call. You don't have to wait until you're the, uh, you know, at the point of wanting to end your own life or, or in a crisis. If you're having a bad day, if you need to talk with someone, call, reach out for help. Um, you know, there, there's never a bad time to, to talk to someone and to let them know that you're struggling. Um, a really quick question. Um, what do you do to unwind? Oh, goodness. That was a stumper, that, wasn't it? It was. That was a good question. You know, I think I'd probably have to go back to that baking. Um, baking, baking is very therapeutic for Excellent. me. Excellent. Mm -hmm. 
Do you now? Do you do you like baking desserts or do you like baking bread? No desserts. I do desserts. Do you? Cupcakes okay. are my specialty. Oh, yum. Mm. Okay. Well, that brings us to a close. Thank you so much for joining us for Our Own Voice on Case and Community Radio. Thank you to Nicole for uh, talking with us about mental illness. And join us for our next Our Own Voice program. <laughs>